What's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We're back with another episode of the Team Building Podcast, where we learn how to build a dominant real estate team in your market or pretty much any market. Um, and uh, we've got a couple of great uh, folks with us today. Jeff Cohn, obviously, is back from his uh, South African adventure. Talk about that for a second. Uh, we've got Josh Cunningham here from Rockerbox. We're going to talk about how to hire, how to find millennials, how to engage them, uh, both for the inside and outside sales roles. So whether you're looking for buyer's agents, uh, listing agents, both, or if you're looking to build a, a team of ISAs, we're going to talk about how to keep them motivated, engaged, and how to actually find and hire them. So we've got a bunch of stuff to get into. First of all, the man, the myth, the legend, the ever-shrinking man himself, Jeff Cohn. What's up today? Here we go. Super Jack today. i got a great friend of mine, seventh cousin, Josh Cunningham, with us. Josh is just coming off the Team Building Summit. He spoke about this millennial engagement strategy. Um, he's very well spoken on this topic. I'm excited for him to share his great wealth of knowledge with the audience. So let's just get right into it. Josh, take us. Hey, thanks, capture guys. us. Thanks, <laughs> thanks capture Matt, us. for having me. Jeff, it's always a pleasure. Uh, family, like you said, seven cousins. It's <laughs> a long right, story brother. for those of you who want to know. Um, yeah, no, essentially, I'm really happy to be here today and to share some information with you about, uh, you know, what's going on in today's uh, labor force, what's going on in the future labor force. Uh, for the last five years here at Rockerbox, we've been, you know, becoming experts in online lead conversion. Um, and it, it wasn't until maybe about six months ago, Jeff, when we were we were planning out the team building summit, you'd asked me to come and speak. And, you know, the obvious message is, yeah, let's come and share everybody all the secrets about how to convert online leads. But uh, what's really interesting is that in just seven years from now, in 2025, it's predicted that 75% of the workforce is going to be made up of millennials. Um, and then we also have, just last year, one out of every three homes that was purchased was purchased by a millennial. So, again, it's kind of, you know, looking at where the market's going and understanding that uh, a lot of realtors are going to be getting out of the business. A lot of uh, experienced realtors are going to be getting out of the business, and we're going to have a lot more um, college grads and young, hungry millennials looking to kind of take over the workforce. So, um, again, the last five years we've been bunkered down here in College Station, Texas, um, hiring and training over 250 ISAs. And so we just wanted to kind of shed some some of the you know lessons learned, uh, the hard lessons learned. Um, you know, we always fail forward and invest in learning experiences. And so we just wanted to kind of shed some light today on um, what we're doing here at Rockerbox to attract, hire, retain um, top quality talent, um, and uh, also what we're doing to make it fun and challenging and engaging and learning uh, opportunity every single day here at work. That's cool. awesome, man! Super exciting. I know everybody listening. I mean, a lot of people talk about looking to hire that next millennial. Um, a lot of people that have been in the, the business a very long time feel like they need to do more to be cool, um, to attract those millennials, maybe less rules, uh, more fun atmosphere. Uh, Josh will be able to kind of walk us through that. So let's get into it. What's the first step there, Josh, uh, to, tr to attract these millennials? Sure. So um, if we're going to talk about stereotypical millennials, you know, we're going to talk about the things that they're going to be interested in their work. Um, and, you know, times are changing a little bit. People aren't just looking for a career where they just clock in and get a paycheck, you know, sell their soul for eight or nine hours a day and then go home and actually be who they are. People are actually looking for a creative outlet in their work. Um, they're also looking for an environment where they can get immediate uh, and close feedback from their superiors. Uh, and they're also looking for, you know, team environments are much more celebrated nowadays rather than, you know, the individual being responsible for the individual's work and trying to beat out all their uh, peers and, and get the promotion, so to speak. So these are kind of some of the things that we're going to review, actually, what we do to hire uh, and train our uh, callers here at Rockerbox. And I just want you to kind of, you know, keep those things in mind as we go through what our processes are and see if those are some of the things that we've been able to accomplish. But, uh, you know, essentially with us, when you talk about attracting the right talent, um, you know, kind of one of the frustrations that I see day in and day out is um, when people are actually looking to make their first hire of an ISA, and I see posts online all the time about, hey, does anybody have a good job description uh, for this ISA? And I feel like that's the, the first challenge, because if you don't actually know how to sit down and describe what it is that someone's going to be doing, then it sounds like you've already, you know, struck out on the first swing by not creating meaningful work, you know, if you literally can't even explain what it is that someone's going to do. So for us, we do have a, a job uh, posting. It's up on Texas a ms career website. We're located just right across the street here. And so we've got a good relationship with the university here. So if you're in a university town, a lot of the career websites are actually free for you to use. So you don't have to pay a big fee like Monster or any of the other online job postings. So if you've got a local university, 
uh, reach out to them. Most of their career websites, you can you know, go through a very simple uh, vetting process and start putting your, your job posting up there. So that's where we get all of our candidates is uh, right across the street, Texas A&M. So we've got the job description. What we do though in our interview process is again, it's not just some salesy, um, you know, comment about this miracle job that, that you know, requires no work and pays a bunch of money and, and gives you a bunch of experience. So we, we get very, very, very specific about what the expectations of the role are, but through the interview process, what we want to do is start vetting that person, to make sure that they're actually qualified to do the work. So we do uh, have them send their resume, but then we have them do a DISC profile. And uh, it's super important because for a lot of these millennials, um, they've never taken something like a DISC profile. And so to actually sit down and get a really nice report that explains to them how, they, how they're how they motivated and how they think and how they like to work and how they celebrate their successes. It's actually for the first time in their life, you know, the, the first time that they're actually going through and seeing something like that. So this profile, a phone interview for us, um, an in-person interview. So this is all very typical stuff, but the one thing that we do differently here that I've had a lot of people give us um, praise is our observation. And so essentially at the end of the interview, we know if someone's gonna be a good candidate uh, to be able to do the work that we do, but we want to make sure that they're actually excited and motivated about the opportunity here. Again, we don't want them just clocking in and clocking out. We want them looking at this as an opportunity to invest in themselves. And uh, so at the end of the interview, we basically say something along the lines of, hey, very impressed with your qualifications in your interview today. The next step in our interview process is to invite you back for an observation. And we're going to pair you up with one of our most senior reps, and you're actually going to get an entire hour to see the calls that we make, the technology that we use, the scripts, the dialogues. Um, this is your interview of us. So we want you to ask as many questions as possible. And at the end of the observation, we want you to write us an email review about um, how well you think that you would fit within our organization. And so we basically have these kids get a, a very clear uh, expectation of what the work actually is. And then they write us a nice persuasive essay on why they think they would be a good member of the company. That's awesome. I think one of the biggest things you said there, and I use that a lot, was that job description. If you're not in a position where you could write a job description for a potential internal or virtual assistant, you have no business having an internal or virtual assistant. Um, I did a lot of sales calls for quite some time for 1,000 calls a day, probably over 100 sales calls. And I remember constantly ingraining into um, that sales audience, our potential clients, the, the mindset that if they were to hire a virtual assistant, for them to be successful at that, they already need a proven process in which that virtual assistant would make outbound calls to acquire leads for them. What I meant by that was if you had, if you're trying to hire a virtual assistant to go and make expired calls and you've never made expired calls, how can you hold them accountable to that? What kind of analytics are you supposed to expect them? You know, what kind of response are you supposed to expect them to get? What dialogue should you have them use? And the biggest fallacy of thinking you can do that is that once they do highlight an expired lead, if you as the agent don't have the dialogue to overcome the objections of a typical expired lead, when you then reach out to that lead, you're not gonna capture any business and you're gonna claim that it's the VA's fault for not getting a seller to sign a listing agreement and just dropping it in your lap, which isn't the way it works. And I think Josh, you would speak to the same thing with Rockerbox, I'm assuming your VAs aren't getting people to sign purchase agreements and listing agreements, right? No, unfortunately. We also don't have the ability to go out and show homes either. We haven't figured oh, that shoot. out yet. Okay. <laughs> so what we call them is highlighted leads. You know, you, I could go on every day, I could spend three hours making outbound calls and maybe capture two or three great leads. A VA might take eight hours to capture me one great lead, but it's not a lead that, you know, it's not somebody that is ready to sign on the line that is dotted. It's a person who raises their hand and said, yeah, I'm interested in selling. Jeff can give me a call. Well, I would much rather hire a couple people for you know $1,000 a month that would line up call opportunities for me so that I'm not having to make the 90% of the dials that nobody answers and then the one out of 10, you know, nine out of 10 contacts that everybody says I'm not interested. And that's the whole idea, yep. right? It's leverage. Yeah, and again, that's another cliche millennial stereotype is that uh, when leading millennials, you never want to ask someone to do what you're not willing to do yourself. And so, like you said, you, not having a job description or not having a plan or not having a training program, which I'm going to dive into our, our training program here a little bit further. But uh, essentially, it's kind of like the same argument that realtors always have with a FISBO, you know, with a for sale by owner. Oh, hey, you've never mm -hmm. sold a home in your entire life, but suddenly <laughs> you're going to sell it by yourself. You know, meanwhile, this is what I do as a full-time career, and here's my entire plan of how to sell your home. But 
you yeah. know, this is your first, this is your first shot at yeah. it. So uh, it's kind of the same thing. They say yeah. it's my, expensive my, to hire. Prof- amazing how we uh, forget about that. Yeah. My expensive joke every time I was on a listing presentation and someone said they were considering putting it on the market themselves. I'd ask what industry they were in. And then I'd mention that anytime I'm going to use that interest industry in the future, I'm really just going to go do a Google search, watch a YouTube video and do it myself. And it's always so laughable. Everyone's like, oh, ha, 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 of course you wouldn't do that. And I'm like, you're doing that with probably the most expensive investment you've ever had. Yep. So think about it. And so if, yep. if an agent's strong and can show people that and help the, the seller believe that with the agent, they're going to make them more money, then of course they would go with them. And I know that's what your callers try to do as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They say it's expensive hiring a professional, try hiring an amateur, right? Yeah. So yep. I All guess right. next thing, go ahead, Matt. Did you have a question? Oh, no. Well, I was going to say, like, it's funny because uh, I think I put a post up on Instagram to go back to the, like, doing it first. Uh, and I think the quote was, systems before people. And, and, and it caused some interesting reactions. Um, but it really goes back, Jeff, to what you said. It's not systems above people. It's just systems before people. You build the system. You do it yourself or you have somebody on your team do it first. You build the system first. Then you bring somebody into it. Uh, and, and, Josh, going back to kind of what millennials want, I think one thing that I have noticed, and this is, you know, not, I don't think it's necessarily unique to millennials, but I do see a little bit less of a drive to just solve problems right out of the gate. Um, and so they, they really do want a system to plug into. Now, they, they obviously want freedom within the system, but if, if, if your typical millennial comes into something that's very unstructured and very chaotic, Unless they're a super high D, like unless they're a, literally a future successful entrepreneur and you, you just happen to stumble onto the right person, they're going to have a really hard time bringing order to chaos. Yeah. Like it's our job as the entrepreneur to bring order to chaos. Then you bring someone into the order. And it seems yeah. like that's, that's exactly what you guys have done with your system. Yeah. And sometimes you might be lucky and stumble upon one of those just go getters. And mm-hmm. you're like, oh, I found this great person. And then you just, you know, kind of let them drive whatever system they've got. And then guess what? One day they're going to leave. They're going to want to go get their real estate license or they're going to want to move uh, into a big city. And at that point, you've been relying on an individual, not a system. So you're, you're exactly. absolutely right. This is first you got to build the system before you start plugging the millennials in. So Yeah. So what's yeah, the training actually, system? Yeah, I want to go through that right now. So, it, again, another frustration of mine is. I see all these comments online. People say, hey, I just hired my first ISA. Does anybody have any scripts? Or what kind of training do you put them through? Hey, so I just went and printed off. This is our training guide right here for a new, brand new ISA. And again, this is a part-time employee. Mm-hmm. Um, all, of our, our, all of our ISAs are college kids, and they work for us for about 16, 20 hours a week. So are again, those some having, of them over your shoulder? Are those callers? Yes. Yep, these are all the callers right here. So awesome. They're all busy working for our clients right now. But um, – Making sure, you know, they come in here day one. If you say, oh, yeah, I just, uh, well, I found the job description online that you interviewed for, and now I interviewed you, and now you're hired, so uh, maybe you should go online and look for some role play partners, or maybe we should go online and look for some scripts, right? That's not going to that's not gonna establish a really good foundation, a really good system for someone to want to be challenged to step into and to know that their performance can be measured, that they're going to learn the things that they're good at, that they're going to learn the things that they're not good at and what they can improve on. Again, structure is something that a millennial looks for. So I'm just going to kind of thumb through here our new employee training. So once we get someone through the observation, they write us their persuasive essay. They say, hey, this is a wonderful organization I want to be a part of. And, you know, this is going to help drive my skills and lead me to my, my next step in my professional career. We bring them in for their orientation. Their orientation, they get a little bit of history of the company. So kind of how Rockerbox started five years ago, um, how the problem started and how we solve it these days. Uh, but we're actually going to walk them through, you know, all of our policies and procedures. But then we start laying out, you know, how their performance is going to be measured. This is what we call a CSE, and it's a customer service evaluation. So on day one, they can literally thumb through here and see every single script, every single objection handler that they have. And then as you can see, moving forward, there's even fill-in-the-blank stuff for their training. So all of our training is done one-on-one. Their first four shifts is done with a, one of our senior trainers. And it's one-on-one. As you can see, that environment is a little intimidating for a brand new person to come in here and start making calls next to all these experienced callers. So we actually have a private training room. And so those first four shifts, uh, every single day when they show up, they have homework from the previous day, um, scripts that they're writing out, uh, objection handlers. So we take the script one section at a time. Um, They're coming in, they're filling out homeworks. 
Uh, they're filling out quizzes. And again, every single step of the way is already mapped out for them. So um, the one-on-one -on -one training is very important, but also giving them the, the ability to, to actually look forward at what they're going to learn the next day before they come in and having some preparation uh, makes those training shifts much, much, much more impactful. So, uh, I mean, it's there's a ton of stuff to dive into there, but essentially my yeah. my recommendation is, like, you got to start with something. This, this didn't start out this thick. It started out mm -hmm. probably five, six pages. But over the years, it's grown and grown and grown with all of the, yeah. you know, forms and documents and trainings and things that we've added to it. So you got to start somewhere. You don't have to be perfect to get started, but you got got to get started to be perfect. So. Uh, Josh, one of the one of the things that stood out to me as we talked, we've talked multiple times about your rocker box story, is that you started off by making outbound calls for spring. Mm -hmm. So share share with the audience how many outbound calls you've probably made in your career. Man, when I when we first started this, I you know I was working at Viral Marketing with with Frank Clusets, and we were going to all the different masterminds, and you know this is about six seven years ago, and everybody's complaining about I'm buying internet leads and my agents aren't following up with them, and so suddenly started people started to introduce the ISA model. So one of my clients, Spring Benson, out of Salt Lake City, Utah, she was about to give up on internet leads, and you know I had acquired all this hypothetical knowledge, and I said, well, you need to get an ISA. She's like, well, help me do that. So we originally tried to, well, we didn't try. We, we hired and trained an individual and applied all the hypothetical models. And, you know, within about six weeks, she was excited and energized and ready to go get a real estate license. So we were back to square one. And uh, that's when I realized, you know, there's an incredible talent pool here in College Station, Texas. This is where I went to school. And I was like, you know, I, I could probably, it's not, the, it's not the system that's incredibly difficult. Everybody knows what you're supposed to be doing. Call the leads right away. Call them a whole bunch of times. Stay in touch. Not, it's not uh, you know, rocket science, but you got to really find the talent that can thrive at that system. And you got to know, you have to bet on someone not being in this role for the rest of their entire life. So that's why we're here in a, in a college town where these kids come, you know, they're, they're investing in themselves, investing in their future career. And so they look at this as sort of a, a, almost a paid internship to a lot of these kids are going to get in sales and get into real estate and do things along that line so i came back here to college station and i said all right spring i'm gonna put on the put on the headphone or put on the headset and start making the dials myself and so i was on mojo eight nine ten hours a day doing all sorts of any type of call that an isa would ever would ever do i was you know strapped up and making the calls and figuring out what the most effective process was and the most efficient way that you can you know service more than one team at the same time so that was about five years ago and uh now we've like i said worked about a million leads uh, is what we estimate over the last five years, and we've trained over 250 ISAs. I think it's awesome. Obviously, you have a ton of analytics to back up the numbers. Um, when a new ISA comes on, I'm sure there's benchmarks you're expecting them to hit their first month, their second month, their third month. I know for our real estate team, we've reverse engineered all those numbers, and it's nice when we're recruiting a potential agent, especially someone that's never sold, we can share with them realistic expectations as to how long until they'll do their first transaction, how much they'll earn their first year, how hard it is to convert an internet lead, how many calls they have to make to get a certain amount of contacts, to get a certain amount of appointments, to get a certain amount of sales. Would you mind breaking that down for us within those million leads you guys have worked? Do you know what your numbers are in terms of every amount of lead gets us this many contacts and this many contacts gets us this many executed sales for our clients? Yeah, I mean, that's that's the most important thing when you you bring together a team of, you know, individuals that are all, you know, overachievers, so to speak. I mean, a lot of these kids to get into A&M, they were, you know, top 10 percent of their high school class and extracurricular everything. So these these kids are, are used to always being the best at the things that they do. So, you know, getting on the phone sometimes and getting beat up and getting rejected, some of that stuff is tough. So we absolutely have all sorts of measurements uh, of, of our performance here within our office. So it starts individually. So every single opportunity that we identify, we actually scorecard it into our own um, our own you know database, so we can know you know where the lead came from, what the lead source was, were we on the phone, were we texting, were we emailing, uh, did we get a seller opportunity, did we get a lender opportunity, and so as a whole of about those numbers, we get roughly about 10 to 15 percent conversion. So if if a, if a website generates 100 registrations a month, we're typically sending 10 to 15 hot and ready buyers and sellers over to the team to talk to. And then uh, of those metrics that we track, it's, it's roughly about two thirds of those opportunities that are also ready to speak with a lender. And as you know, a lot of 
uh, people out there with that are generating internet leads have some support from a, a lender partner. And so that works out well because again, two thirds of the, the opportunities that are going over to an agent are also going over to a lender. Uh, but what we do is, so we scorecard all the activities individually, but we've actually broken up our uh, our call center here into a couple different squads so we can actually compete with ourselves. And so we've created different squads out here and you know they're teamed up so we can make sure all the shifts are covered. Um, but essentially we have monthly contests. So uh, again, tracking the same metrics, buyer percentage, seller percentage, lender percentage. Um, we also track errors as well. So, I mean, we, we, this is a people business. We do people work. And so there's obviously going to be human error. We actually measure all the errors and track it and scorecard it um, whenever we find little goof ups. And so all of that stuff is tracked. We have monthly contests. And so, um, you know, some of the squad winners, we have a big, uh, big championship belt that, uh, so you can't see it right here, but we got a championship oh, got belt that in. hangs on hangs on to uh, one of the the poles out there, and they get uh, you know a no dress code day on the weekends, and they they get some uh, you know credit in our merch shop. So I mean I think that's the most important thing because you can invest a lot into a caller, and you know you can make them get on the phones and be effective at the work. But at that point you've invested so much. I mean for us it's a minimum of 20 hours given the interview process and the training process. So 20 hours of one of our most experienced people have been invested into this caller now. Well, now we got to retain them. And so that's where a lot of the tracking performance, measuring performance, having contests. We have individual contests, uh, a Top Gun of the Month that can lead to an annual cruise. Um, we always, we do a, an annual tailgate party. We do an annual pool party. We did a big winter gathering extravaganza last year. So it's all about celebrating people's successes and, uh, you know, letting people know. A another thing that we have here is an org chart. And it's very, very visual that you can actually see uh, where people sit on the org chart. So obviously everybody's going to come in on the, on the bottom, but you can actually see the structure of the teams and the people that are ahead of you. And, and there's, there's a very visual representation of us being a growing company and there being opportunity to grow from within. So those types of things all add to and contribute to when these people show up every day, th their work is meaningful. It matters. They get feedback. It's fun. It's challenging. And we know that it's more than just a clock in, clock it out uh, activity. It's actually an investment in themselves and they're growing as an individual. And so it's mm -hmm. creating an environment like that. It's not, it's not easy, but uh, it's just you know, day in and day out, a reminder of who we are as a company. We do a, a huddle to start each shift and we cover all our core values and acknowledge people for following the core values. But again, training to do the work is just, I mean, that's really only step two of really the three, four step process of you got to attract them, you got to hire them, you got to train them, but now you got to retain them and get them to stick around. Sure. One thing I want to point out for anyone listening, of course, you're probably not going to have a, a call center with a hundred virtual assistants or internal sales agents, but you may have two or three. Um, my first experience with using a virtual company was my Outdesk. I'm good friends with Daniel Ramsey. I have a lot of respect for their organization. And Daniel rec made the recommendation from day one to me that don't just that I should not just have one VA. I should always have two. And I should essentially have them compete against each other. So the one that, that leads the pack sets the benchmark. And if the person that's behind them is too far behind them, you can let them go and introduce a second person. If that second person you introduce then sets a new benchmark and person number one can't keep up, you can let person number one go and bring in another person. So they're always raising that bar. One of the nicest things about leading by example is you should know where that bar is for the best caller, which is you. So I knew when I started hiring virtual assistants and internal sales agents exactly what to expect from a results standpoint because I knew the results I got. I never expected anyone to get the same results but definitely close to them. And so that's something for anyone listening to this. If you have a VA or have had VAs in the past and you're wanting to try it again, I would highly recommend that you have at least two people working in that role. Just like Josh said, they can put everybody into these teams and they've obviously gamified and I love the gamification component. Millennials also love the gamification. It's not always about sharing the bonus or the commission. Sometimes it's just the pat on the mm -hmm. back. Uh, mm -hmm. Quick question from Logan in Montreal. Logan's also one of our coaches with Elite Real Estate Systems. He said what he'd love to hear a little bit more about is how you handle big egos and um, the want for millennials to be promoted fast within the organization, even when they're not that's, ready. That's a really good question. What's up, Logan? Hope you're doing well. Um, so big egos, I had mentioned that we disprofile profile all of our callers. What do you think we're looking for in that disprofile? profile? Working for really oh, yes. high eyes. <laughs> yeah, no, really high eye. Someone who can be the life of the party, someone who never has an awkward moment, 
And so when you put a bunch of high I's in a room, you're, there's, again, that's why it's a little bit more difficult, a little bit more challenging to build a human capital organization. It's not just copy paste because you're dealing with human emotions and, and, and uh, uh, you know, people's lives that they bring into the office. And, you know, again, they're not just clocking in for a task. You know, they have many activities going on outside their lives. So for us, it's really just about, you know, celebrating everybody's successes you know, giving people the recognition that they need. Um, but, you know, we are an organization that's a bunch of high eyes, so we do like recognition. So it starts out with our daily huddles. Um, everybody has an opportunity at the very beginning to recognize someone for living by the core values. We actually go through the metrics and we acknowledge all of our top guns to create that fun, friendly, uh, co competitive environment. Um, every single month at our, at our workshops and our masterminds, again, we do core value recognition. Um, the other thing is, our, everybody starts in our call center, they're, they're a client care rep. The next step is to become a client care senior, and all of those client care seniors are actually appointed by our existing client care seniors. So there's very much a uh, sort of peer accountability that, like, if you come in on the bottom and you're a hothead and you're cocky and you're not a team player, you're, you won't work your way up within the organization. The culture will actually force you out. Um, so again, we want to be a cohesive unit where we're helping each other build each other, and there is opportunity to grow within the organization. But um, I guess to touch on your second question there, Logan, is, is you know millennials not not being or being discouraged by not being promoted so quickly. That is something that we always do look at, and for that reason, we've actually created a couple different layers within our organization. But um, for us, it, you you probably see on Facebook a lot that we're celebrating our employees' annual uh, anniversaries which is a very rare thing in a call center environment that someone would actually stick around for an entire year. Um, but whenever we go to celebrate those year long anniversaries, you know, we make a nice post about them and their accomplishments. Typically when someone has been in our organization for an entire year, they've, they've moved up two or three times um, in you know, accepting more responsibilities and, and things like that. So we've actually purposefully created an org chart to where there are enough steps that if you come in here and you're a top performer, about every you know 90 days when we're sitting down and doing an evaluation, there's there's normally about another step for you to make in the in the org chart. So we have our client care reps, we have our client care seniors, we have our training specialists, we have our team captains. So you know not too much variant variance in the work that they do, but there is a hierarchy of responsibility. So we have purposefully created an organization that has lots of steps and layers in it, so people can move up within it. I think that's awesome. I hope everyone caught that at the one year mark, there's somewhat of a social celebration. I don't know if there's actually a celebration within the office. I would guess there's an excuse to bring in cupcakes or something like that. <laughs> How many of us as agents, we're making an average of $20,000 net per agent. How many of us as team leaders are celebrating the one year mark, the five year mark, the 10 year mark of both our agents and our staff? So I think that's a great reminder um, that we should be paying attention and celebrating our human capital because they literally feed, house, and clothe us. So I think that's awesome you guys do that, Josh. And as you pointed out, especially in a call center environment. Mm -hmm. All right, where do we want to go, Johnson? This is good content, guys. Yeah, um, yeah that's awesome. Um, well, we, we've kind of covered the the questions that we had from the live audience. So guys, if there's anything you want to uh, to cover, we'll bring it to Josh at the very end. But Josh, what's the best way to kind of reach out and learn more about Rockerbox and what you guys do and from the client side? Sure, we've got a, a bunch of content out there. I would highly recommend to like us on Facebook. Uh, of course, Rockerbox is spelled a little weird. It's Rock R Box R O K R B O X Rock R Box, and uh, go like our Facebook page because once a month we do a Facebook live stream um, where we actually invite people into our workshops, into our masterminds, into our huddles. Uh, we basically, you know, want to humanize the brand and let people know that we're not just some, you know, uh, dungeon of people chained to a desk here, you know, like <laughs> cracking a whip or anything. Like I don't know. I was envisioning the opening scene of Robin Hood Men in Tights. <laughs> Yeah, we're actually people here. We've actually got amazing students that are all, you know, investing in themselves and furthering their careers. So, uh, again, we do a Facebook live stream each month um, and kind of invite you into our office so you can get a taste of our culture. Um, other than that, though, if you want to meet more about, you know, hire, actually having an ISA team hired for you uh, so that all of your leads are followed up with, just go to our website, rockerbox.com, and just fill out the capture form there, and, and we can set you up with a consultation and walk you through a demo. You guys, they do an amazing job. Obviously, you always hear me talking about how your agents should be making the calls. 99% of the agents aren't making the calls and certainly aren't making enough calls. So if they're not and you can't get them to change, 
We highly endorse Rockerbox. We use Rockerbox. They do an amazing job. They do everything they say they're going to do. Um, I think Josh might have a special ERS and the team building podcast discount that he could throw at you guys. So be sure to bring that one up. I'm sure he'll love me for that. Oh, the yeah. The other thing I wanted to mention is you guys send out a monthly email. And I actually read your email every time it comes out. Uh, yeah. I really enjoyed the content in that email. And I think you can probably get on that email list without being a Rockerbox client. Yep. Yep, certainly. Yeah, just uh, opt in on our website and we'll get you in the email list as well. So, um, awesome. yeah, we're, we're, we're sending out as much content as we can, trying to educate the, the world here on, obviously, the Internet uh, internet lead conversion stuff has is, is been um, – it's been cracked. We've cracked the code for the last several years and we're all over that. But what's really fun and what really keeps us you know, motivated and, and driven every day is, is uh, you know, our, our mission here at Rockerbox is to move people forward. Um, there's a lot of people that we work with. Obviously, there's, you know, you know, people, the leads that wind up on the websites, you know, we help move them forward in the sales process and get them connected with a, a highly reliable and successful realtor. You know, we, we've, it's awesome that we've done, uh, just did our five-year anniversary story with Spring Benson, our first client. And her business has nearly tripled over the last five years. So, obviously, we've helped her move her business forward. Uh, and there's so many successful agents and so many teams that we work with that have, you know, walked into an amazing team that has a foundation for success that's providing so many tools and resources for their uh, agents. And we've helped move those agents forward. And some of them have even gone on and started their own teams and stuff. So, uh, but it's also exciting to show up every single day and see all these Texas A&M college students and uh, to know that, you know, they're, they're here, they're excited to do the work that most other people aren't excited to do and uh, that we've made it fun and we've made it challenging and that for them, um, it's an opportunity that, you know, these kids are getting multiple job offers whenever they walk the stage. Um, a lot of them are getting jobs, you know, lined up even before, uh, even before they walk the stage. And so their last, you know, a couple months while they're working for us, they're, They've already got a job lined up. Everything's uh, gravy. I actually have a text message here I want to share. This is a little corny, but this is uh, this is one of our callers who recently graduated in uh, May, and he had already had a a job set up for months ahead of time. And um, he recently started the job, and he sent me this text message the other day. He said, "Hey, Josh, just wanted to reach out and reiterate how valuable my experience at Rockerbox has been." Gaining experience interacting with clients, making presentations, and working with executives really showed its value during training. None of the other presenters stood a chance. Can't wait to see how Rockerbox is doing in a couple months. So that's nice. really the, the stuff that gives us the warm fuzzies here is to know that John here, you know, one of our callers, one of our, uh, he's been with us for almost two and a half years, and now he's on, you know, in his, the next step of his career, and none of the other yeah. presenters stood a chance compared well, you to look at look at the kids skills. today middle school high school college and recent grads their whole world has involved social media and phones and texting um whatsapp mm -hmm. you know marco polo all these all these things where they're not interacting face to face or even even over mm -hmm. a phone and that just think about it. someone that's made thousands of calls within Rockerbox or working for our real estate companies it puts them in a whole new category when they're competing for any position, especially leadership positions within organizations. So that's an awesome text message. Yep. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I also want to put sure. out there, guys, we have a team building workshop we host in Omaha almost every month. We're actually starting to do regional events. Our first regional, it's not 100% official, it's about 97% official. We're going to be doing it in Key West in coordination with Viral Marketing's Mastermind in December. So we'll have some dates coming out for that. It's going to be a discounted rate. It'll be our regional team building um, workshop in Key West, Florida. So if someone's wanting to make the trip down, that's a great time to be down there in December. Um, also upcoming August 13th is our next workshop in Omaha. We've already sold 10 spots for that. I think there should be one or two more available. So if anyone wants to make that date, I'll actually honor a 50% off discount. So just put in... Well, reach out to me via Facebook. I'll give you the discount code to use for that if you're wanting to go to the August 13th uh, team building workshop in Omaha. The next one after that's October 22nd. So we are not hosting anything in September because we have a few virtual events or uh, broker events that we're going to be hosting outside of Omaha. So we're leaving September open. So the next one after that is, um, I'm sorry, September, or no, October 22nd. Yep. And then the one after that's November 12th. So if anybody is wanting to attend one of these team building workshops, a lot of the people that have come through have 2X, 3X, even 10X their business after experiencing that all day workshop in Omaha. Awesome. Matt Johnson, anything else to tie the bow as you would say? 
That's right. Uh, just a quick thank you, everybody that, uh, that jumped on some heavy hitters. Kurt Francis, Logan Boise, Randy, Randy Lemus says, Josh has changed my perspective on many, many things. Thank you. So thank you to Josh for that. Uh, yeah, we have Damon Gutier, a uh, bunch of people. Uh, my man, Zach Hammer, uh, who helps um, uh, helps uh, a bunch of people in real estate and especially on the real estate investing side uh, build uh, really killer sales funnels and put their courses together. So I'm just getting to know Zach. Zach had a great question that uh, we unfortunately we don't have time for about you know how many companies are missing out because of avoiding millennials and things like that. So unfortunately, we don't have time for that. Um, so hopefully, you guys can connect off the air because you guys actually should know each other. So um so Josh and, and Zach, make sure to uh, to connect. Hopefully, you guys can connect here in the comments. But guys, we're live every Wednesday morning, same time. So make sure to join us next week. We've got a bunch of awesome guests coming up. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast. Leave a nice rating and review. Uh, trying to get over, I think, 100 is the goal by the end of the year. We're at 50-something, and so halfway to the goal. So make sure to call out the guest of the show that you like. So Josh Cunningham for today, give him a shout-out in the review. Let him know what you liked about what he had to say, how it's going to help you in your business. We'd really appreciate that. Uh, and then go grab the uh, the show if you're not already subscribed on Apple Podcasts and iTunes and Stitchers and, and all those uh, various places. So with that being said, guys, we really appreciate it. Thanks, Josh, Jeff. This is awesome. And uh, we'll see everybody else on the next one. Always a good time. Always Thanks, a you guys. Pleasure, guys.